Hi, Ritwik. Hi. This is Arunagiri. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, you too. Uh, it was a fantastic concert today. Thank you. Thank you very much. What really blew me off was actually, I think 95% of the concert was all Shuddham Hadhyamam. Was it? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think nah. it was very well, very well managed. Uh, the, uh, I, I was looking for a Pratimadhyamam. 95% or 100%? Uh, I think the last uh, Tilana was the Pratimadhyamam, I think. Oh, Adhukagava. Okay. <laughs> nah, nah, normally, I don't uh, plan my concerts beforehand. So for me, mm. whatever I feel like singing at yeah. that point, I just sing. So for me, I don't have restrictions as to um, necessarily having a, a Pratimadhyamam for the sake of it. Okay. But, some, but some days, if I feel like singing a Varali, uh, Kalyani and something else which are all Pratimadhyamam back to back I still do it because because it's more about the melody and the music rather than uh, these restrictions for me personally the, there is a there is a uh, aspect of soothing there is Saukyam in the music I've all, already seen your YouTube videos today was really soothing uh, the choice of ragas as I said there was no there was no Force fitting of, uh, as you said, a Pratimadhyamam or whatever, yet the songs all stood apart. Whether it was a Begada or a Mukhari um, or a Maya Mala they were all meditative and they were, they were fantastic. At times, contrastingly, fast and the second column, the male column was very, very uh, rich. And also um, the fact that Rob Riddle did a great job with the sound today. Right. I think one right. of the best sounds that I've ever heard in Sifa. Right. Having said that, how has been your trip so far? My trip's been great for me. Um, uh, for me, this is my first uh, major tour of North America. So, um, so to visit all these centers about about um, which I've heard so much from so many senior musicians who travel so widely. Mm. So it's uh, so so far it's been a wonderful experience personally for me to actually go and visit these places and sing in these same organizations who have been hosting artists for all these years and uh, the kind of warmth that we get here from the host because the host has probably never seen us or heard of us before but then we land up in their house and then for the next three four days they take really good care of us so irrespective of whether it's the host or whether it's the organization or the people involved in making the concert happen um, we go back with a really nice feeling after every single concert which also makes us want to come back and we are left with very happy and positive memories which I think is very important and uh, which also builds relationships over time. So I think this trip for me has been lovely in that aspect. Actually, uh, the, the fact that I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm uh, a friend of you uh, on Facebook, uh, I've seen some you know, pictures of you also sightseeing, you know, oh, yeah, for you... me, um, for me, look, for uh, I mean, for all of us who are touring, basically, the, uh, the concerts are on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So, Monday to, thurs Monday to Thursday, we are pretty much free. Suppose if we are in a city where nothing is close by, mm. then we stay back at home. Okay. But say if we are staying in Virginia and Washington, D.C. is 45 minutes away, and if we are, or if you are staying in New Jersey somewhere, and if New, New York, York is about 45 minutes to an hour away, then... To get, to get I see no reason to not uh, yeah. go and look around and, and for and for someone like me uh, I love to travel and uh, because my job which is which is music and singing a concert also involves a lot of traveling that's one of the perks of the job for me and I'm a, and I'm a huge song. foodie yeah and I love to try a lot of different cuisines and a lot of new food um, vegetarian of course so um, so in a place like this where there are so many new restaurants, so many amazing cafes and bistros which are all around the place. For me, it gives me a lot of opportunity to also go and test out new food. So those are things that I have been looking forward as much as the concerts too. It's a fantastic mix of looks like music, food for soul and food for <laughs> the real food. Um, so when did you begin learning? Um, I started learning when I was about say four or five years old but, but it was very informal mm. in the sense my mother is a music teacher mm. so um, she constantly had students who were um, coming home and learning from her and I was, name? I was always there mm -hmm. her name is Sudha Raja okay. so um, I was always at home obviously so I was three or four and uh, uh, schooling hadn't begun yet and I was always there in the next room or in the hall or probably in my mother's lap and I just started singing along so my dad listened to me one day and said 
look, you have so many kids who are coming and learning from you. He's sitting there and singing along too. Why doesn't he also sit? So music was always ringing in your ears. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah. for me, singing was something that just came to me naturally that I just did because it was so around you, me at home. Singing me, chose you rather than you choosing the singing. Yeah, so for me, it was, it was never forced upon or mm. it was never a ritual mm. at home. Fantastic. So is that what you would suggest? Because there have been questions that uh, people have asked me. Uh, for you, uh, you know, it just came naturally to you because your house was full of music all the time. But when people are obviously interested in music and they know that there are positives about exposing their kids to music, what what should be done? Um, look, for me, basically, I think uh, I think the most important thing is to give the kid exposure and let the kid choose. Suppose mm. if the kid listens to the music all the time and mm. picks it up, mm. then he picks it up. But if the kid doesn't like it or doesn't have an inkling mm. towards picking it up, then that's that. It's 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 very simple. Suppose if a kid from the age of two is constantly given sambar or given pasta, mm. the taste is developed, right, beyond a point. But irrespective of what the kid is given, mm. sometimes kids just don't like spinach or kids just don't like brinjal. Not because they haven't been exposed to that, but because, because for uh, some reason they just don't like it. So exposure is the first part. You expose the kid. If it likes it, it'll automatically pick it up. If if it doesn't like it, then the moment you start forcing something on the kid, it becomes a very uh, bitter experience. Uh, at least, at least that's how I feel. So I think music like music like this, or wanting to learn music like this, is also an acquired taste and something that will happen gradually in every kid's mind. So basically, you're saying that it is it is a huge responsibility on the parents. Because absolutely, the kids can't choose whether it's food or music. Absolutely, or absolutely. I know so many of my friends who despise Carnatic music purely because of the fact that every day after school, their parents <laughs> would immediately change them up, stuff something in their mouth to eat, and immediately give them a bag and send them off to music class. So, how so do you how do you make in that context? Uh, how do you make it cool for the kids? Well, I mean, why why is Carnatic music Sometimes it's, it's, it's kind of... Why should it be made cool? I don't know. It, it, for the kids, right? Cool as in... It's not the same like foot tapping. It's, there, is, there, is, there is a lot more to Carnatic music that is, that is required. So how, is, is there a way that you would... I think, I think, um, I think this um, way of looking at it comes from our own condition. Because, okay. because we see modern kids not taking to Carnatic music, we immediately think that, that there is something deficient in the way we approach the teaching system because of which we need to change certain things so that it appeals to children. No, not at all. There are still so many kids today who immediately take to learning. There were so many young kids today at the concert whom, who, all, who all came and introduced themselves to me who all said that they learn Carnatic music here locally from local teachers. And I'm sure that even if the first push came from the parents, mm. these kids looked really interested and they stayed through the concert purely because they are still interested in the music. and. I'm sure there was nothing that was cool or new or fun for them to pick up Carnatic music. Uh, I think the moment you start trying to change things just so that it becomes more appealing, mm. then you lose out on the music itself. So, Carnatic so, music is something that is serious. Carnatic music mm. is uh, something that is an acquired taste. Mm. So once the kid realizes that, his... Um, leaning towards the music itself will be completely different but then the moment you well I don't want to use the word dilute but then the moment you try to do something different to mm -hmm. entice the kids to come and take to this music or start listening to this music then what they are actually listening to is not just music so you're saying let mom samba be mom samba don't dilute Absolutely. it I think that's a great point um, on the, in the same context um, when when was your moment of, uh, of epiphany uh, that music, that to Carnatic music is what you wanted to pursue? Given the fact that, okay, you were exposed to music, but but it, the music chose you as, as a kid, but you chose music at some point. When was that? What led you to <coughs> really, really love? And you, you thought, okay, that is what I, I must be doing and pursue it and perhaps take, make, make it a career. Right, okay, so leading off the previous point, my mom was also very generous in accepting the fact that I was not going to do music because from the age of say about um, 10 to 14, those four years, I barely sang. I barely opened my mouth and sang at all because because by the time I was eight, eight and a half, 
I was very fond of cricket. So my dad put me in cricket coaching, and I was a very serious cricketer uh, from the uh, from the age of eight. And uh, ten to fourteen was when I was the captain of my school team, and um, I also got the opportunity to be yeah, selected yeah. for the city state level uh, DNCA um, selections under fifteen, under seventeen. So that was a time when I was very seriously into cricket. And at that point, I believed that cricket was what I wanted to do. And um, until I was fourteen, I barely sang. I had uh, those four years. I'd lost complete interest in music. And for some reason, uh, my mom said, "You know what? You're not singing. You haven't been singing for the last four years, but I've been fine with that. But why don't you start learning from my teacher? Her teacher is Sulochana Patagaram. Mm. And uh, she is someone I have uh, literally uh, idolized since I was very young. And Obviously. whenever my mom has gone to music class, I've you always gone along and uh, yeah. and I've always played." in every corner of their house when music class used to happen mm. so a lot of my music listening was also from them so sulochana mummy was someone who was a very close family member literally like a family member so my mom said only if you go to her you will start singing again so basically my mom go to you yeah so 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 for the next 2 3 years say until 2000 this was in a tv years yes so until 2003 from 2000 to 2003 for those 3 years i learned from her Mm-hmm. and i was terrified of her and she was a very strict task master so whatever she she taught me the next day if i didn't go back to class um after practicing and learning it properly she she wouldn't shout or yell or anything but very such but she would be very so disappointed <laughs> that you will feel so bad about yourself so 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 she had a wonderful way of teaching kids and a wonderful way of making kids interested in music it just so happened that in 2002 mm. um there was a six month break break from cricket because there were huge rains and floods all over the city so all uh, league matches school matches okay. club matches every all, all possible imaginable matches and tournaments were all cancelled and um, so there was nothing else to do so my music teacher called me and said look all these days you had cricket but for the next 3 4 months you have no excuse and season is coming up So she gave me a book and a pen, and she said, "I want you to go to as many concerts as you want. I don't know if I don't care if you don't know what Raghu is." This was about the summer season. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so she said, "You have a cycle now. If you want breakfast, come here to my house, eat, <laughs> and then go, and then eat, have dinner outside, and then go back home. But I want you to go to at least four or five concerts every day." So, so I still have that book where I think from December fifth to December thirty first, those twenty six days, mm-hmm. I possibly attended almost one twenty concerts. I still have the artists' names and the songs that I listen to for each of those one twenty concerts. And after that one twenty concert, my mind had completely changed. My attitude had changed. I, I was literally willing to give up cricket to you know pursue music more seriously. And season has that buzz, right? And that can. make you want to change your mind really easily that was also the time when i listened to tm krishna for the first time so that was an added inspiration uh-huh. for me and from then i followed him around to every single concert he sang in madras and then my voice started to break so my teacher said who do you want to go learn to i said look if i have to leave you and go and learn from someone else the only person i will go to is tm krishna because his music is something that i idolized i continue to take so much from so so she was gracious enough to speak to him herself and said look this boy is so passionate he sings very well would you want to take him on mm. so then beyond the point he said uh, and and a lot of people started telling him about me so then beyond the point he said who is this boy that everyone's telling me about let me see how he sings so he calls me one 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 fine afternoon actually that's a it's a beautiful you stole the words out of my mouth uh, because it was like how my the next question is how was it being a disciple of shri tm krishna right okay. so no right so um uh, um then there so basically i went to his house he asked me to sing i sang uh, what I, did you say i had actually planned a couple of varnams hmm. uh, a couple of very off beat modern day composed varnams i see so i started singing that and he said no 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 uh, do you know the kalyani ahtar varnam i was terrified because these were the only two varnams that i had practiced So I said, yeah, uh, yeah, I know the varnam, but I learned it seven, eight years back, and, and I'm completely blank. So I said, that's okay, I know it. Sing along, I'll correct it. So I remember making a mess of the varnam, <laughs> forgetting all the swarans, and then he corrected me, and then I sang all the corrections back. Then uh, he said, okay, come, let's go out, and and then my grandmother and my mother and all of them were waiting outside, and I thought, okay, from the way I sang, he's not, he's prob, not going to take me up as a student. He's probably going to take me up. So he came out and said. he's singing very well he's able to grasp what i'm teaching him but my concert schedule is really busy so let's see if this 
an arrangement works for 6 months mm. and uh, let's see if uh, he's able to pick up and uh, learn from whatever i'm able to teach him from whatever time i have and then after 6 months we'll take a call if this arrangement that is not working then i will choose another teacher for him from whom he should go and learn from so so uh, so i was hoping oh my god i do not want to go and learn from someone else 6 months down the line mm. what do i do so after 6 months i was very nervous the 7 month went on the 8 month went on months passed and now it's been how many years uh, 12 years and uh, he still and he still hasn't said anything at all so so you still find obviously so you become busy to you know uh, taking all these concerts and traveling so right how often do you go and learn whenever whenever i am in the city whenever he is also in the city and uh, the days when both of us are mutually free when uh, when he's free and when he calls for class i make sure i'm there if i'm in the city and if i don't have a concert or a recording that day what is it that you take an away from him as a disciple or what is it that you would have missed had you probably not been what would i have missed the yeah. thing that would i mean music i might have been able to get from so many other people but mm. but possibly the thing that i might have missed was uh, mm. getting to know the person that he was and uh, the close relationship that i share with him uh, we are literally like family and uh, and saying that is a gross understatement not just him his wife his kids all of us are really very close mm. and uh, and i've learned so much from him not just music music mm. of course goes without yeah. saying but but how to handle a concert how mm. to deal with musicians how mm. to deal with organizers how to approach a given situation how to um, stage presence stage presence so many so, no not just things related to music so many so many other small things related to life right. right because uh, because those four or five years when i started learning from him i literally stayed in his house apart from maybe i went back home to sleep but apart from that i used to stay there all the time so so i've observed and i've learned so much from him and uh, beyond the point you know it kind of becomes yours you start thinking about the things that you do and then and then you put in your own self into the things that you're doing so you always need a good foundation or a good uh, solid base from where you start off and then you build on that by yourself so that's what he's given me so i'm i'm very thankful for that so cricket came down drastically during this yeah i think i think by the time i was 15 or 16 i said no more cricket i'm done so as the city was drenching in rain you were you were drenching yourself in those 120 <laughs> courses and that was your moment of yeah. epiphany i think that i totally totally see that um a couple of more uh, sure. points <laughs> if not music you know if you if you didn't If you didn't have that moment of epiphany because you literally drove yourself on then am I then am I probably still be playing cricket <laughs> but you know what i think uh, you uh, going back to my coolness factor right i think uh, young youngsters like you um, i think they are very cool in the sense that you represent an amalgamation of the the ancient as in not um, outdated this is really classical See, if you if I use iPhone three now, people th- see as if I'm from Mars. But if I sing a Tagore well, Jakruti, well, not really. Right? My yeah. my previous phone was an iPhone three, and it still is in perfect working condition, <laughs> which I keep in Madras, which I use while I travel. So anyway, I I, 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 I see uh, all the more, and on this goes my point that you are you are representing something that's classical that has withstood these hundreds of years, right? Right. Um, and I think this itself is a great example of something. it's a good amalgamation of modern as well as you know the 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 old um and and in both can coexist i think that's a great example um couple of more questions um i think the problem there is we like to think of our classical music as being so many years old yeah and because we have that impression and because we give that impression is also possibly why kids don't take to it easily mm. right even if i'm singing classical music yeah i'm singing a modern interpretation of it that's that's probably a few years old for me most of the things that i might sing on stage today is are things that i have probably imbibed over the last 5 years mm. or i have probably developed over the last year so when, so, so when does the kid um, get get that understanding that it is not old but it is something substantial right is is very simple coming back to the point about exposure yeah. let's say that for the next 2 years yeah from all television channels from all radio channels you stop playing any other music the entire world listen only to carnatic music 2 mm. years later mm. when you start playing all the other music all yeah. of that will become alien 
what <laughs> kids and the people will be used to ah. will only be carnatic music because because it's habitual it's about exposure it's about it's about how much um how familiar they are to the music that they listen to because music is something that's very emotional for many people mm. people listen to music for relaxation people listen to music to just calm down or mm. uh, just to unwind after a very long day so it has to be something that really speaks to them yeah so unless they've listened to a music a genre of music <coughs> that makes sense to them suddenly when they listen to a new genre mm. it's they are not going to feel a connect to it immediately mm. right so it has to be constant ringing and uh, even gradual development of love for that particular. absolutely absolutely oh. to be very honest with the boom of social media and the internet and uh, how widely we use the net in uh, today's world i think i think i think we are using it for a lot of other reasons um, than to actually see if we can put carnatic music on a world platform i think there's so much that can be done mm. using the internet and using the modern technology available to us just to get carnatic music on a much wider canvas across the world and reach actually, it out I, there i saw your project nomad uh oh, right. video right. so is that one of the, one of your uh, efforts to put um in that in, okay. that, in that direction or um uh, okay so that was actually um, and so that's a project of a very close friend of mine called pravin kumar he's a mridangam artist he's mm. the grandson of tanja rupendran sir and also a student of guru ayur dev sir so uh, he and me are very close friends and we probably sung maybe 500 to thousands of concerts together so um so he came to me and said uh, he took inspiration from my teacher's movie called the one mm. so um, so he came to me and said look i have this idea um he called me up at 11 in the night and said uh, let's leave tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock let's go to uh, kalpakam they have a beautiful place let's go there and uh, why don't you just sing for, uh, sing whatever you want let's uh, use portions of that so i that said okay awesome. there was there was another project of mine that i did um that's that i think is also on youtube i think i've sung sarasa samadana just the song in that where it's me rajiv on the violin and praveen on the mridangam where all three of us are just sitting at home like how we normally sit suppose if this uh, two of them were to come here and we yeah. were to practice yeah. i'm wearing a jeans and a t-shirt now mm. i would sit down exactly like this mm. they would come we would all sit wherever we found space sing we'd finish and then we'd go back right but uh, many concerts when i actually go to a concert like this to listen to someone else's music everyone comes up to me and says oh you're not in a vesti kurta oh what is this you uh, you come in a mufti of sorts yeah but for me as a person this is what is normal this is what is 99% of the time what i am on stage with the vesti and the kurta is that one percent of the time yeah. when i'm when i'm performing my music yeah. so would it make a difference would uh, would would all the people would all the youngsters of our generation and uh, maybe even our own friends who find it alien for us to suddenly dress a different way to sing a different music strike a different chord when they saw us singing different music but in very familiar clothes that was the <laughs> idea of that video so i mean so me and a few others are definitely dabbling with a lot of these little questions a lot of these little things that we think might make a difference in the long run but but it's all still at a very very basic experimental stage i think there was a lot of very good points and i have two questions sure what is your uh, so obviously you've taken taken us through your epiphany your life uh, with music so obviously a uh, carnatic idol is something that came up later right as in as in um, as a as a, so you didn't go there are a lot of artists that have come up through carnatic and have been identified or oh, discovered through carnatic oh, okay, okay, okay. idol right right right, right. right. you are right. talking about the the tv right reality show reality show uh, what what is your take on that do you have any opinion or no snobs my strong opinions or um because there is a way of that see there was a guru kulam at one point uh you almost lived a uh, you know like of a gurukula with your uh, the teacher mrs sulam sulam patali raman and then krishna and uh, right okay so um so first my view on reality shows itself yeah um i think it's something that gains a lot of traction and trp ratings and all of that but for me personally if you ask me if uh, those shows do anything for the actual art form itself my question is no mm the way it's packaged the way it's flavored the way it's 
edited and the way it's put together is very interesting for someone from the outside to watch mm. but when you actually go into the kind of things that the participants and the participants parents and the organizers need to do to bring out that final output the entire setting the entire um, way in which it's shot is very very unnatural mm. but but if i was to go and sing in a music academy competition when i was say 14 or 15 there was nothing unnatural about it whatever i practiced at home i had to sit down there and sing for me for me that atmosphere seems a lot more plausible and a lot more natural um so so this was just about reality shows in general coming to carnatic idol um i know that there's a huge market for that especially here in the us yeah. and there are so many kids so many parents who want their kids to do really well on that show and uh, the moment you win you are guaranteed a few concerts in madras during the december season and if you do well in those concerts then you think you can make a name immediately for yourself um is it that easy it's not that easy at all i can i can tell you for a fact because carnatic idol in madras happened what three or four times out of those out of the four or five winners how many of them are still singing today and how many of them are still serious musicians and how many of them have made it to the top mm-hmm. and so so what, so what does it take just 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 beyond just winning a certain title what does it take to well while carnatic idol is coming on tv and while people are talking about it and the moment you win everyone remembers your name mm. but then but then if you are unable to sustain that on a concert platform or if you um or if you have trouble making the best use of the opportunities that you get after winning carnatic idol and if you don't make that next step very quickly mm. then beyond a point you're still back in the rat race and uh, trying to fight for the same slots with all the other people who need who needn't have necessarily won the same award mm-hmm. right so for me there are a lot of positives about that you get a lot of exposure people know who you are even if they don't remember your name the moment they look at you because they've seen you on tv and they look at you elsewhere they know oh okay so this is the boy whom we saw on tv at carnatic idol mm. so those kind of things really help in making sure that your name and your face is registered in yeah. people's minds but um beyond a point i i have seen this through so many generations uh, by listening to recordings it's very obvious and even my generation even the next generation unless 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 there is some amount of quality in what you're doing and there is some amount of consistency you may get a name very soon you may click for two or three concerts and those two or three concerts all the right people might come to your concert and people might take notice of you but in the long run it never lasts unless unless you have a you have yeah, a definite actually. quality and you have uh, and you're constantly working on your music and there is definite passion and unless you're also consistent with your concerts and make an impact in every single concert mm. your name doesn't last mm. so great points this one last one so on that note so what is it that uh, what would be your mantra for aspirants kids or um otherwise uh, young at heart and rasikas you know what what would be your uh, slogan or mantra or suggestion i think i think for uh, young aspiring students and kids there is no substitute for hard work mm. and uh, that is something that i understood very late because for me while i was playing cricket music was just something that where i used to go to class i used to come back sing and at that point that was enough but then the moment i had to take the next step i needed to put in a lot of time and effort which how how which many, i never thought was necessary that? per per week how how many hours would you put in well uh, well i think uh, quantifying these kind of things is the worst thing that we can do to a student for okay. for all you know my capacity might be such that i need just 6 hours of practice every week okay. and i may be able to do something that a kid is doing after practicing for 25 hours a week okay. so so it depends on personal capacity okay. personal mental space personal ability and all of those things but there is a certain amount of uh, practice that you need to put within your own threshold where you achieve the goals that you set for yourself the moment you try to achieve goals that someone else is reaching mm. you're always playing catch up to someone else so, so essentially gurus Uh, mentoring is very, very absolutely very absolutely yeah. absolutely because because the guru ultimately knows what is best for you yeah. even if even if at certain points you feel that your guru isn't making the right decision for you two or three years down the line when you look back you will actually think of how wrong you were to think that and how lucky you were to have someone to have actually given you the right advice
so so that's something that i've experienced in so many different ways in so many different occasions at that point when my teacher always said something edu kanna abi solrar it 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 seems like a right decision and a cup of tone now when i think back and look at those things say three or four years down the line oh okay so now i understood what he meant when he said that because because obviously they come through those phases their level of maturity their level of understanding is way more than what i can possibly have so after a few of these experiences is when i began to understand that uh okay, this kind of a um <laughs> layer sort of exists in whatever he's saying in terms of music in terms of in advice in terms of so many other things so which is when i uh, decided to blindly follow whatever advice he gives me because i know that ultimately it's for my own good and he knows better so i think that amount of faith is very important for every student to have with their teacher and for the teacher also to make sure that they always have the students best interest at heart and um, coming back to your question about the rasikas as well yeah i think uh, um i think there are there are definitely a lot fewer people listening to music than about 10 15 years ago i don't think the same kind of rush is there even for the top artists of today but i think that's because of not enough younger people coming i think the entire average age demographic of the yeah. crowd has uh, come down uh say say if the average age was 60 now it's somewhere between 35 and 40 so that's encouraging but the number of people who are there are mm. are are still not at a standard where it where it should be personally so is it because we have so many sabhas now that people are getting diluted or because previously maybe there were only fewer sabhas well, not just that i will also say that because people are getting uh, dispersed all across the world now mm. you take everyone from the us who listens to carnatic music and put them all back in chennai yeah even the re concert yeah. will be a full house concert hmm i see there are there aren't there are just aren't that many people in the so Madras so so do i see a distinction that you're making between rasikas here outside india and within india i am in fact saying there is no distinction oh okay their love for music is the same okay. but because they're dispersed in two three uh, different places it's a pure number game that's... it's a pure number game which is why the december season even if there are 10 artists singing in 10 different halls all 10 halls are full so suddenly there are 10000 people listening to music but the moment the december is over and there is an exodus of people to all different parts of the world the same artist say the same top ranking star artist mm. sings a free concert mm. at the nardagan sabha main hall and the and the hall is barely half full mm. but the same artist is singing for tickets where it's 1000 rupees 5000 rupees 200 rupees 500 rupees and the hall is full mm. and people are actually fighting for a ticket it's, it's, a, it's, it's the same that. artist it's the same music but the number of people are just not there in every city so when there's a culmination of people it feels like there are so many people listening to music that kind of a crowd that kind of a strength of music listeners should be there independently in each city i think i think that's something that all of us need to work towards and target to make sure that there is a continuous listener base mm. among uh, um carnatic music lovers hmm. well it so happens chennai is the hotbed of uh, carnatic music right. for better or for uh, worse uh, well good. well to be honest in yeah. most of the other places when they ask me where all i'm singing next whenever i've mentioned san jose most people have called it the south india of <laughs> united states yeah, or have <laughs> called it the chennai of the united states so and uh, that was very evident today because to see so many people here i mean we have already finished a uh, 13 concerts across the tour but this kind of enthusiasm and this kind of numbers and uh, this kind of uh, response yeah response yeah. is uh, not something that we saw in every city so far so that's really encouraging that's 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 really nice it is true i think i, I will just hit the nail on the head Uh, it is it is uh, and i i feel very lucky you know being myself interested in music and i've come back to music after a long time being in this area uh, i think you're in the right right area for right. performing artists uh, also serious like you and for asika as well right um those are my questions uh, rithvik and um, i really thank you for your time my pleasure It's pretty my pleasure. late today and you have a ca- flight to catch tomorrow no problem at all it was my pleasure to uh, speak to you and uh, looking forward to come back with you sure thank you thank you